Hi, um, my name's Riley and it's March 13th, 2023, and today COVID started. Uh, the shutdown first started three years ago today, um, and I find myself to be a pretty nostalgic person, um, so, and that and also I was going through a, um, a TikTok trend about what 2020 you would have thought about 2023 you and I found this video I made about a week into lockdown so three years and a week um, ago and I am trying to pull it up on my computer I think it'd be cool to do a live reaction to a lot of it um, but yeah let's see some big updates in my life um, I was a senior in high school when COVID started I um, was 18, I'm 21, I'm a third year at U Texas. Woo woo. And I, um, yeah, I'm a RTF, Radio, Television, and Film, and Plan 2 major. I have a certificate in museum studies. Um, I have a job at an archive right now doing AV stuff with um, pretty old materials, which is cool. I'm back in my childhood bedroom for spring break right now which is exactly where I was when I filmed this video. Um, I don't know how people do this where they like make it look cool. Um, 2020. Like where it's like I put it in the corner of the screen. Maybe it'll be here. Or maybe it'll be here or here. I don't know. I don't know how people time it right either. Um, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't usually talk to the camera. I'm most often behind the camera, but I'm currently working on a documentary about my brother and his debate. He's, uh, not to brag, but number one in the country right now. <laughs> and I, through that documentary, have been, um, reflecting on my own, my family, my own perspective, um, and just realizing that I don't, I don't talk to the camera enough. You know, like, I don't have any lights set up. I don't have a fancy sound machine. This is just me and my camcorder, and my little DSLR. It's not even a camcorder, it's a freaking DSLR. Yeah, let's, let's watch this. So, um, to start, my hair is a little bit longer. Um, first off, I love cut. I literally, my friends and I, like, I think this was for a cut Jubilee video or something like that, like an audition almost. I don't actually remember why I was filming it. I still love those videos. I cannot stop watching y'all. Um, yeah, okay, um, that's a mess. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Riley. I'm a 18 year old high school senior in Austin, Texas. Hey -o. Um, it's my eighth day in like social distancing isolation. Um, and my family was quarantining early. Uh, my mom is a breast cancer survivor and we weren't exactly sure i mean we didn't know anything but we didn't know if she was immunocompromised um how it would affect her i mean i also have a younger brother i've got my parents are definitely also uh, they're definitely not young and like, with all the love in the world i love them but um so my and i also have a um didn't know this at the time of the video but would eventually lead to a uh, heart condition and um, some other <laughs> syndromes and uh, disorders that I have that makes me uh, wanted me made me a little more careful. But so I remember that spring break, I had gone on my first road trip with friends to the beach. It was me and my two friends. We it was senior skip day. It was the Friday that everything got shut down. So we went to the beach that Friday. We spent the night in Port Aransas and it was so fun. We stayed in a yurt, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And um, it was like our first taste of freedom. We were finally all 18. I was, well, actually, yeah, my, my, yeah, we were finally all 18. So we felt like big and in charge. Um, and I remember my friends, one of the friends I was with mom made her bring wet like those like Lysol wipes, Lysol gloves, masks, things like that. We were all making fun of her and like like acting like we were gonna go and like clean up the car we drove in and clean the bathroom and the buckies we stopped in and stuff like that. And I remember just thinking like this will all blow over. I mean everyone thought that. Everyone thought this would all blow over. Um 
And now it's three years later, six million, over six million people have died. And um, people are permanently disabled from for life because of this uh, illness. <sighs> so basically, I um, as soon as I had gotten home from the beach, I was in isolation. Like I was allowed to see my friends if we sat outside like ten feet apart, but that was pretty much it. And I was, I mean, obviously, I, I'm glad I did it. It kept me and my family safe. Um, but I do remember feeling a lot of resentment for parents and families who I saw doing um, non-COVID safe things. So uh, what do I miss the most? Well, I, I never thought I would say this, but I miss going to school. Um, it's supposed to be like my senior year. It's the second semester, you know, we, I, this is the same story for most seniors around the country. Like this was supposed to be our year you know and it's like 2020 it's like the perfect year to graduate and it's like 20 you know like it's a cool year we've all been excited about this for so long after spending like 13 years in schooling I was pretty excited to get out I did say that of course it happens in the coolest year to graduate in we don't get to graduate um I I did I've always loved 2020 for that reason not just because it's my graduation year but because I thought it was cool okay letters I don't know I thought it was sick okay maybe I'm a nerd yeah I I haven't been back in my high school since then um I went once um to a play and I couldn't I couldn't stay I needed to leave I went back to my brother's high school he went to a different he goes to a different school now um than I went and. It was super weird stepping back into like their lockers and uh, not being in charge. Like I'm used to university where no one really gives a nobody cares what you do. Um, there's no one like patrolling the hallways. Um, I really really miss like being able to go to school and hang out with my friends at school and like I can't believe I'm about to say this, but even like classwork. Oh God, that hurt. <laughs> Um, I just, I really like my high school a lot, and the friends I've made there are basically like my family, and being separated from them really sucks. Um, I think a lot about all the people that I never saw again. There's a long, long list, and even the people that I text with or I see on social media that I haven't seen in person since then. Um, I miss you. I really liked high school. I definitely, I mean, everything has its ups and, down, ups and downs, but the communities I made in high school formed me into the person I am today, and never saying goodbye is weird. Yeah, I think I'm still processing that grief, almost. I ran into someone, I was walking home from work, because I missed my bus, um, on Friday, and I ran into a kid I have not seen since senior year of high school, since pre-pandemic. On the street and he was just like he was on a run like going down the sidewalk and I was like literally had like my backpack and everything with me and I was like oh my god and he, he kind of did we did the Spider-Man meme where we just kind of looked at each other and we were like how are you like how are you doing how is everything but yeah so I miss that I am really involved in theater so I miss our like say well our theater directors just emailed out a big Thing that all theater shows are canceled for the rest of the semester because obviously school has been canceled um and that sucks because it was supposed to be like my final senior shows that now never get to happen even which really suck um i'm trying not to dwell on it too much because there's a lot of things that i'm missing out of right now um yeah you dwell on it past riley you dwell on it a lot <laughs> you have depression um and Every time you get low, you dwell. Theater is something that I thought I would never get to do again. I'm happy to say I'm president of a theater club at UT. Go Brox. Um, and I'm still getting to put on shows and create art. And for that, um, and now I do cool theater that's way better than high school theater. It gets better, um, but it is, I was gonna get to assistant direct and stage manage. Um, Actually, I have no idea what I actually, a show that I was super excited about. My whole class was going to be in it. I was going to be with all my friends. It was going to be like our last hurrah. We had just put up 
the bulletin board and like decorated it outside of the school theater. Um, our show, it was gonna be almost made and I was so hyped. We had made like these snowflakes and like decorated the signs and we just put it up announcing our show dates, which were gonna be in like May. <laughs> like the day, like literally the week that everything shut down and getting that email from my directors was soul crushing. Um, I know that theater kids are cringy and annoying and yeah, we definitely are all of those things. Um, but like I would spend more time with those people than with my parents uh, than in my own bed. After leaving that space and being able to reflect back on it, it wasn't the space, it was the people that many of which were different ages of me and I never saw again and I still haven't seen. And instead trying to think like, oh, what a cool story to have, you know, like for my kids if I ever have any. Or, you know, like to tell you like, oh yeah, my senior year of high school, we got quarantined. <laughs> um, this is how I tried to force my lookout. And I still, this is still my mantra for when things go wrong. You know, like it's, it's, I'm trying to tell myself that I'm missing out and, but it's okay because everything's always works out and I'm s still hopefully going to graduate. Time jury's out on that one. Um, so... I'm really sad about that. Um, I pretty much have spent my four years of high school um, working <laughs> on like different, working in different areas. That doesn't make any sense. Riley, what the fuck are you saying? Um, uh... I was an overachiever. I was a part of every club, group, org, every extracurricular, every job opportunity, every opportunity to do something that came, became available to me, I did. I said yes to everything and I loved it. I loved being busy. I um, loved meeting new people. I loved hanging out with those people and solving problems with those people. Um, so I, I think the shutdown, like forcing me out of that like over, overachieving mindset is still something I struggle with today. Um, learning to say no is really hard. I, yeah, so I really, I really just miss school and the communities that I have there, the clubs, the programs that I've been in for four years that I now never get to finish in. Um, and then all, like, the senior, like, ceremonies and, like, you know, prom. Oh my god. Oh. I'm on the, I'm on student council and so we've been planning prom for so long and now that it's canceled I'm just like mm, I'm so sad it's literally so tragic oh, I'm just gonna look so hot too but it is it is it's just we only I thrifted my dress for ten dollars and I was so excited to wear it um I also I did plan prom I was part of the like me and like four other people and we planned prom for almost a year before. Uh, it got canceled and it was literally gonna be in April like a month from the shutdown so it was it was brutal um I yeah we only have a senior prom so like this would have been our only year I would have been able to go yep. not anymore um what I'm afraid of right now is that my parents are going to get um COVID-19 or that someone I know is going to um, teenagers are stupid and a lot of my friends are out because it's also this week has been our spring break and so people are out and like still going to the beach and like still going to driving to Florida you know like going and partying and all this stuff like they're still interacting and not socially distancing themselves and so I'm super worried that because we all want to have a senior year we're gonna put that in head of our um, health because like I, I could I could have it. I mean, one of my friends could have it, even though we're all mostly asymptomatic. And then, like, our parents are not too young, <laughs> most of them. Um, and I don't know, that terrifies me to think that someone I know who is older could get it from stupid teenagers, you know? But, like, I also understand, like, the stupid teenager side as a stupid teenager. Like, I want to have a senior year. So, I don't know. It's valid on both sides. I guess. I mean, it's not because someone would die, but... <laughs> I'm just gonna pause that for a moment because it isn't valid on both sides. I 
am so angry and harbor so much grief for the loss of my senior year, which in the grand scheme of things is so small. Um, and I feel silly and annoying and cringy whenever I'm in the therapy session and I'm like, oh yeah, like the fact that my senior year ended is still fucking with me. I'm a freaking junior in college. I'm gonna graduate college soon. And I'm still thinking about my senior year of high school getting cut short. Like, six, over six million people are dead and I am still sad about my senior year getting cut short. It's hard to put it, it's hard hard to understand. I don't understand. I'm mad at myself. Like that anger that I have at the pandemic, at people not being safe and at, at the government for withdrawing um, the mask mandates and all that stuff gets reflected back on me. And I'm angry at myself for feeling so like so pissed. I'm angry that I'm angry about this silly little thing that happened to me. And I know a lot of class of 2020, college, high school, all of y'all out there, if you're watching this, maybe you feel that kind of like almost shame that you're still harboring grief over a year of high school, a semester of high school. Um, but you're valid. I work hard to change my mindset to say that I can grieve um, and also grieve the world that we lost. Um, and that doesn't make me a terrible person. I also grieve all the people that we lost and all the horrible things that happened and are still happening. Um, and because I'm pissed still to this day that I didn't go to prom ever, I'm valid for that. I don't know, that's taken a lot of uh, therapy to get through and a lot of conversations with my mom. Shut up, mom. That's what I'm most afraid of. I'm also most afraid that my the rest of my senior year is still gonna get canceled. Um, I'm afraid that I'm not going to graduate. Um, I'm afraid about my future and the opportunities I'll have in a world post this. Um, what gives me hope currently is- well, let's, let's talk about the negatives first. <laughs> uh, your senior- spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Your senior year gets cancelled. You still are not recovered from that. You go to college. You live on campus, uh, you live in a dorm that's literally empty except for your roommates and your RA. <laughs> um, you can't, nothing on campus is open. You take all your classes online, you can't even go to the dining hall um, and sit down. You have to go in and get your food to go and leave and eat in your room. So you really spend a lot of your time in a tiny card concrete box. Uh, Still a time though, you appreciate it, you you feel lucky, and I still feel lucky that I got to have some sort of experience, well, and I'm also super jealous of my friends who still live on campus now and get the dorm experience, even though it sounds a little grosser and a little less private than what I had. Um, uh, Future-wise, you can't go on set for two-ish years, and then after that, you start getting really sick and weak, and... Uh, you kind of, your body kind of, and now you really can't be on set for 14 hours a day like you were used to and enjoyed. Um, so I don't really work on set anymore, and as sad as it is, it's not what's best for my physical or mental health, and so now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do in my life that doesn't require me to be on set for like 14 hours a day. Um, uh, you get really into casting. Yeah, casting, um, development, research, scouting, uh, assistant directing and producing, figuring out all the logistics, um, yeah, you haven't held a camera in a long time. You find other passions, and you try to make them work for you. I'm gonna graduate in a year, and I don't know what I'm going to do. You find other things to fill those gaps, but they're definitely not the same passions that you had beginning in 2020. Is that we're like the social media age, so I can keep up with all my friends on social media, FaceTime, I've played so many rounds of who, like, 20 questions on the little Apple thing <laughs> through text message. Um, 
a couple people have sent me letters, which has been like amazing to like actually get mail for once in my life. And so that's definitely like sending me help. And um, I really love letters. Let's be pen pals. Yeah, I just, oh, what else has been giving me hope? Um, seeing, I can tell you what's not giving me hope is every single company I've ever given my email to on accident, <laughs> sending me an email saying like, this is how we're dealing with COVID-19. I'm like, great. Keep that, I, I thank you. I haven't even thought about you in four years. The cool thing that gives me hope and gave me a ton of hope is that in about a month from this video, I started collecting fabric and hair ties and ribbons and random things and started making masks. Um, I was able to donate uh, about, I want to say like 50 or 60 masks to um, different uh, Native American reservations in the US. Um, I was also able to sell masks um, to my neighbors and all of that money, 100% of those funds, which ended up being I think over $1,200 to different um, bail funds, different um, black-centered charities and organizations. Um, and I also made bucket hats out of all those scraps. And I still have a lot of those fabric scraps. People just donated me things. Like, I put out on Facebook and on Instagram and Twitter and all that, and I was like, hey, if you have a tablecloth, you have curtains, you have an old dress, you have t-shirts, anything um, that you don't use anymore and you want to get rid of and you're doing a little spring cleaning because we're all stuck at home, send them my way. And I spent probably like over 10 hours every single day sewing and that gave me something to do. I felt like I was making a difference. I was making a difference. I was able to donate a lot of that proportion to a lot of that money that I raised, um, to bail funds around the country that helped, uh, get protesters and other people that were un unrightfully unjustly incarcerated out of prison and jail and I it gave me something to do it gave me focus it gave me drive um and it gave me ability to help from my house and kept all me and my people safe um a lot of, sometimes I will still like be working on a project and need a certain color scrap of fabric and like look at my drawer and be like oh my god this is from a t-shirt um, my neighbor who no longer lives in the state of Texas gave me in 2020 in order to make masks. Um, so it was, that was bonding. That really gave me hope that I think saved me in a lot of ways. And I hope it helped other people. I still sometimes will see people out in public wearing a mask that I made. Um, or I've seen like people on Instagram with my bucket hats. And that's crazy. That's wild to think that anything I do affects people outside of my circle or even just outside of myself um i don't know my dad works in retail and so i guess something else i'm worried about is um his interactions and exposure potential exposure um what else gives me hope seeing a bunch of like really small companies like local companies here in Austin, um, whether it's like food or like there's a lot of art companies that sell like actual stuff, have been totally transforming their business into like helping people. Um, someone that I really love, Big Bud Press, I love you so much, I still Oof, love you. has totally transformed their LA stores online and Chicago online and then they stopped producing most of their clothing in order to produce like masks and medical supplies, which I think is so cool. So they're, they definitely give me lots of hope. Um, um, and then I, uh, what do we, what am I gonna do once this ends? I really hope I get to go back to school after all of this. Um, I'm probably gonna go get a coffee <laughs> with my friends because I haven't seen them face to face in a really long time and I miss them and um I want to have a, like a slumber party with my friends which is such like a childish thing to say but like I want to celebrate our senior year I really hope that I get to graduate after this ends that I'll whack I'll walk out of this quarantine and walk on the stage 
and get my diploma would be really nice. Um, I get to go back to work after this is over. I work at a really cute pottery studio, uh, pottery parlor, and art school, and so not spending my spring break like I was planning to of working there and teaching art camps and stuff has been really sad for me because I miss those kids and they've had to close so um I'm probably gonna go well my parents and I will probably drive up to see my grandma in Louisiana because I miss her and she hasn't been able to leave her house because she's old <laughs> um so yeah um thanks for doing this video guys uh I have been binging the cut videos instead of doing the school homework I've been supposed to do. Pardon me. And um, I love everything that you'll produce. Um, please let me work for you one day. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going into film. So uh, y'all have inspired me a lot to work on stuff and to also with this whole thing like moving to remote filming has definitely inspired me to um, work on myself and the things that I do in order to make room for other people so and like accommodate accommodate that's the word I was looking for um so yes y'all give me hope for moving everything remotely and online and doing this whole video thing it's really cool it's really cool okay thank you so much it's 8 30 p.m I'm probably gonna go have dinner and go to sleep. I don't know what else, much else there is to think or talk about. Um, you don't go back to school. You go back to a different school. <laughs> you go to a different school now. And the world is definitely not the same it was three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot to process. I can't believe it's been three years. I. I feel like this was both yesterday and another lifetime ago. But, um, no buts, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, and cut, if you ever see this, I guess I filmed this video for you at some point, and I would still love to work for you. Give me a job! <laughs> uh, I love you guys, I love everyone um, who's supported me emotionally these past three years. I love everyone who I met in high school and I haven't spoken to since or I haven't really interacted with that much since. Um, I still think about you. I still think about all the everywhere I sat in all my classrooms. A lot of my brain is taken up by things that happened in high school and definitely you. So um, and eventually, maybe eventually, I can do an update video if this ever actually ends. Thanks for watching.